a deal so that they would not be worship the emperor. And so since they were not forced to worship the emperor, they had agreed not to defy anything that the emperor and his, his people said or did. And Jesus threatened that because Jesus proclaimed that there was a king greater than the emperor of Rome, namely God. And Jesus claimed that he had been sent by God to preach God's word, not the emperor's word to the people. And that threatened that fragile stability between the synagogue and the occupying government. But Nicodemus has heard Jesus speak. Nicodemus has seen the result of some of Jesus' preaching and actions. And he recognizes that there's something unique going on in this person of Jesus. Nicodemus is a lot like you and me. We have our notions, our ideas, our beliefs. And we want a God who will fit into them. We don't want a God that will call us to question our beliefs, our prejudices, our understanding of the world and how it works. But our understanding of the world and how it works, our prejudices, our preconceived ideas are all just that. They are the human creations and therefore will fall short of the full acceptance of God. And so like Nicodemus, we see in this Jesus something different going on in the world and calling us to participate. And yet, want to keep the safety of what we have established, of the world we have created. Indeed, sadly here in the United States, we seem to be in a battle of should we go back to the 1940s or so, or maybe earlier, or should we move forward? Should we understand new things or should we seek to go back to old things? Ours happens to be a denomination that tends to say we need to seek understanding and knowledge of today. We need to open ourselves to current practices. Indeed, one of the marks of the Episcopal Church is the three-legged uh, stool. We, we respect and honor scripture as the word of God, interpreted by humans, however. We honor and revere tradition, the, the words of those theologians who have gone before us, those saints, who have proclaimed the gospel, but we also call forth our own human ability given by God for reason, for study, for learning new things. So we say we, we rest on scripture, tradition, and reason. Nicodemus I think could have made a good Episcopalian because he was immersed in scripture and he knew the tradition. But he also saw in Jesus something that was calling for something different to come into the world. And while he was trying to have one foot in both camps, which is why he showed up at night, he did have the strength and the will to show up. And Jesus has an encounter with him, one of the longest personal encounters between Jesus and another one individual in the Bible. And Jesus calls him to the fact he can't keep one foot in both camps. A choice, a decision must be made. Just as Jesus calls you and me to that choice and that decision every day, whether we realize it or not. 
There are two words that appear several times in the gospel reading today, and we may have missed them because they are big, important words. Anybody want to take a stab at it? I know it's at least three times that Jesus responds to Nicodemus, starting his response with two little words. Very true. Very true. And in the Gospel of John, when you hear the words very truly, that means folks wake up, get undistracted, pay attention. I'm going to tell you something new. I'm going to tell you something essential and important. And Jesus is saying that unless we open ourselves and embrace the spirit of God and welcome that which may challenge our perceived notions and understandings of the world, and how it is, unless we open ourselves to that, we will miss, fail to be God's people in this world. Jesus is inviting us to a new way of living, a way of living that is far more fulfilling, far more accepting, far more joyous than anything this world by itself can offer. But Jesus is also telling us we have to make a decision. We have to make a choice. So Jesus says very truly, you must be born of the spirit in order to be fully alive. You must be born of the spirit of God and live in that spirit and within that spirit, opening yourselves to new possibilities, new ideas, new acceptances in order to fully live into the kingdom of God, not only in some future life, but right here, today, right now. And if you will turn to page four in the bulletin, please stand as you are able. We will say together the Nazi Creed, 